What's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to episode 12 of Eastern Current. Me and Billy are pretty stoked. I'm going to be honest, a little bit nervous, too. This is our first episode of just me and him. Um, we definitely are excited about it. I uh, hope that you uh, can, can take a lot from today's episode. Um, and yeah, we're just we're just excited to be at number 12. We're just cranking through them and hopefully bringing y'all some 12. S- number 12, bringing y'all some some content that y'all like and um, that y'all have learned. And, and our, our main goal, like we say in every episode, is just to build a, uh, a community of friends here and, and anglers and guides and whatnot that, that can share information and and can come together and and um, hopefully do, do do numbers for this fishery do some good stuff for this fishery so yeah man good 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 stuff too so if you guys are watching if you're tuning in make sure you uh drop us a message there in the comments let us know where you're watching from what you're what you're what you're doing where you're at uh what's up force hey force i got your message man we'll definitely get back in touch with you had a busy week didn't get a chance to but all is well appreciate you reaching out uh, we got Roger from Hampstead checking in. So, yeah, let us know where you're watching from. And just a reminder, you guys can go check out us uh, tomorrow. The show will be on our podcast. And so I've been doing a lot of research on podcasting, Judd, and apparently yeah. I've been like, oh, do some reviews, do some reviews on iTunes, and apparently reviews and doesn't really matter. It really matters if you listen to the the podcast and then just share it with your friends. I mean, that's uh, from my research. And subscribe been, too, right? Subscribe yes, to the podcast yeah, channel. Yeah, subscribe and just uh, share that, you know, anytime we share it. So we'll share it on our Facebook. We'll share it on our Instagram. If you guys could help us out and share, that'd be great. But man, I had a lot of fun with the with the podcast stuff so far, Judd. So it's been pretty good, man. Looking yeah, forward. Yeah, it's been cool. It, yeah. it was like kind of an uh, afterthought when we were first starting this whole show and it's become kind of like almost our not our main focus, but a very large focus. Yeah, man, it's actually been really, really good. Um, you know, kind of surprised, man. Actually, getting right up there, almost 200 downloads per episode, so pretty good. So thank you guys for sharing. Yeah, uh, I'll try not to do that high pitch. Pretty good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good <laughs> pretty good that's so pretty good but yeah we're gonna be talking about um top water and this is something that man it's one of my favorite types of fishing um once again i'm not a very good angler in general so uh if you guys see me peeking around i'm looking judson's like head we didn't is do the right best camera set up <laughs> yeah his, his head is right in my camera uh so i'm like basically staring hello, at it yeah hello judd um so yeah we're looking forward to that but just want to give a shout out to all of our sponsors and you can see uh just across the bottom of the screen here um and i'll actually just read them from there thorpe creative which is my business we do t-shirts hats apparel all that kind of stuff uh eastern england which is judd uh judson's um is his guide service business so take him out man fishing is hot right now we're gonna get into a fishing report in just a second and let him tell you all about it but it's probably in my opinion the best time of the year to book a trip so you might as well book with uh eastern angling uh afco marshware we're gonna be giving away this marshware hat right here just a few minutes from now Uh, Those colors, my favorite colors. So for anybody who doesn't know, this is a good episode. We don't have a guest on tonight, so it's a good episode to kind of take care of some house cleaning stuff. If you want to be entered to win Catch of the Week, it's very important that you send us a picture during the week to our Instagram, Facebook, uh, or email us at uh, etcurrent at gmail.com. We'll get that. Be sure to tell us where you caught, I mean, not exactly where you caught it, but general area of where you caught the fish, what size the fish is, if you know, and definitely what you caught it on makes for a great caption for us uh, when we're putting those things together. And, and then we also just recruited your cousin, I believe, to help nephew. us out with mm-hmm. nephew. Yeah, nephew. he's going to be jumping on the Instagram here in a couple days. And, and what's his and name? His name is Stratton Brock. And, and Leighton, Leighton Folk as well, another nephew. They're going to be kind of tag teaming. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. So if you guys are on our social media stuff, it's really Instagram in particular, they're going to be on there helping us out some. Uh, that way we can keep up with stuff a little bit better and and make you know better content on there as well as doing some great Certainly. videos and live shows. And so, yeah, m- make sure you reach out to those guys. Uh, so AFCO, we're going to be giving away that hat. Uh, Mar- or Marshware and AFCO, thank you so much. We really appreciate their sponsorship. Uh, Eastern Engling, I already went through that i strike get on their website check that out you can save up to 40 percent on their uh, jig heads which is just amazing i mean really amazing that you can go on anyone's website and save up to 40 percent just by buying in bulk yeah so one thing i cool. want to say about i strike too just a quick little plug here so i did some underwater filming yesterday of a bunch of different lures going to do some videos here coming up on youtube but the Texas eye. I love the Texas eye for sight fishing, but one thing I noticed, and I didn't even tell Billy this before the show, but when I was fishing that thing underwater, or when I was filming it underwater, yeah. so that hook kind of swings off the back. You remember how mm-hmm. it, and it's oh, yeah. articulating? It makes this little clicking noise oh. like a shrimp underwater. Okay. It sounds gotcha. like a shrimp popping underwater, which is real cool. So go check those Texas eyes out. 
and uh, and and get you some because they are they're awesome all around. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, go check those guys out. And then also, uh, we've seen a lot of good feedback from the sheep's head gel bait. Really yeah, as well. awesome. So awesome, awesome. Go check that out. Uh, yeah, so I guess that covers. And then Seto, we appreciate those guys, Scott at the Wilmington Seto. Call call them up. Uh, get some. Uh, make sure you're, when you're out on the water, if something happens, you got a, a rescue plan or you got a plan for somebody to come tow you back in if you need to. Um, and yeah, they'll come hook you up, and it's pretty cheap, man. I think you have a Seto membership. It's pretty for the year. It's like pretty cheap. Yeah, it's not bad. It's really not bad. Considering but what it you, is, if you don't have if it, if you don't have it and you need it, it it's very expensive. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like an insurance. I don't want to say too up. much because I don't want to be liable for anything, but kind of like an insurance package, I suppose. Like it's uh, sucks because you got to pay it, but if you don't pay it, then you're gonna be paying the paying the big dollars. Paying so the big dollars. Awesome, man. So I had a lot of good uh, picture submissions here. So let's see, Judd, what do we got for catch of the week over there? Let's uh, let's pull it up. We have got. Oh, here he is. Can you read it? Backwater cartel. Is oh, that... Kyle Warren. Yep. Kyle Warren, that. backwater cartel with a nice fatty flatty and a big redfish. Yeah, killing man. the game. He's taking advantage of the what is it? A two week window now, right? So the yes, yeah, September fourth, flounder the flounder season will close. We'll close. Gotcha. So big decision. We won't get into it. We had a pretty good show. So if you missed it last week, uh, go back check that out. Um, apologize for some of the comments and things that were happening there but it is a huge huge debated topic and so we just did our due diligence and trying to pre- pre- try to really present a fair balanced approach to that so uh, once again kyle appreciate it man we're going to be sending you uh he just said hey en- really enjoying the show and thank you for watching kyle we're going to be giving this to you either meeting up with you or shipping it out there we go that's where it's in focus super nice apparel man by the way yeah for um, sure. So that's going to be coming we just, right uh, to you. I just got on uh, Rick McGee said, I strike is having a Labor Day sale right now. Extra 15% off everything on the website. Oh yeah, man. So definitely Dude, a good time insane. to go check it out. And I mean, you, that's huge savings on, on some eye strike gear. Yeah. What's up? Luke. They got some pretty cool says, apparel too. Says what's up guys. What's up, Luke. We're going to have you back on the show soon, man. We upgraded the audio, all the equipment. So Luke was on our first show. I know we're going to do it soon. We're stoked. Yeah. We got to have him back on, man. Talk about some of this winter fishing. Luke crushed that first episode. Episode. Me and Billy dude, looked at yeah. each other afterwards and we were like, dude, this is awesome. We need to keep doing this. This is incredible. Yeah, that was episode one. If it wasn't for Luke, we wouldn't have done episode two. <laughs> <I know. laughs> uh, we got to get Luke in here and talk about how to catch those big old triple tail, man. It seems like he's pulling one out of the river every time I turn around. I know. I don't know, man. Is that like a normal fish? Tail to chaser. Catching? Is that a normal fish to, to just pull Not as normal around? as like a redfish, flounder, trout, but it's, they, they we, there's, no, it's not a normal fish. They're here That's in the summer, but yeah. they're not like, they're hard to go target for sure. All right. Uh, somebody asked you a question. Marge says, Judd, what is your go-to weight in the Texas eye? What are you using? There's just one weight, I believe, in the Texas eye right now. I could be mistaken, but I think there's just one weight. And I think it's three eighths, but I could be wrong on that. I would pull it up on my computer, but it'd probably crash on me. So yeah, let me let so me know if uh, let me know if if I'm wrong about that. But I, every time I, I've ordered it a handful of times, and there's just been one one weight selection. I could be completely wrong, but I'm pretty sure on that. Cool. Yeah. Well. Uh, great information, right? Yeah. Great information. <laughs> Thanks for being such a reliable resource, Judd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could be right though. You could, could be, be right. right. You get a 50 50 shot at this point. Yeah. All right. Cool deal. Well, so anyway, Judd, so let's talk a little bit about fishing, man. I know it's been pretty hot. Everybody I'm talking to every, every time I open up Instagram, I'm just flooded with pictures. Uh, so dude, what has been happening on the water with you and your clients? What do you guys been seeing out there? Um, so it's been, I gotta be honest last week. I struggled a few days. It, um, I had some good days, but it was tough. It was, uh, we had that rain, I guess, maybe two, two and a half weeks ago, and, and the water was kind of still flooding out and a little dirty. And I had some good days, but I had some days that I really struggled. We had some wind and, and whatnot, but it has been – we've had some cooler days like today and yesterday, and, and the fishing has really started to fire off. We really got the start of the mullet run going on uh, across the beach and down our waterways. And um, had caught I, today I caught a bunch of nice overslot redfish inshore and in the ocean and – um, everywhere we went, we, we were, we were getting into some and fishing areas with a lot of bait concentration has been key, but redfish, flounder, trout, the trout fishing is really starting to kick off and we've had trout all summer. But, um, if you're fishing that, that morning bite right now with artificials from sun up until, you know, nine, 10 o'clock. And if it's overcast throughout the day, you can catch, and I'm excited to get into this today, but I mean, we've been catching trout on top water. I think yesterday, the other day I had a, had trout blowing up at one o'clock during the middle of the day, which is pretty rare this time of year to get trout eating topwater, you know, 12, one o'clock middle of the day. 
But the inshore bite is definitely uh, going on. And I tell people all the time as a guide, I'm like, they call and I'm like, I, I promise this isn't guide talk, but August, September, October, you know, late August, September, October are my favorite times of the year to fish here, um, which unfortunately is some of the harder times to book here, but the fishing's really good. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, it seems like you guys are slammed during the summer. And then when the, I guess, school gets back, everybody kind of goes back to reality for a month or so. Yeah, it's not really a tour. It's, or it's not really a destination fishery is what I say. And it's more of a tourism based industry. So as the tourists are here, we're booked busy. You get a few clients traveling in just to fish, but most of them are here on vacation fishing with us. Oh, gotcha. Cool. Well, yeah. So if you guys are looking for a fishing trip, once again, hit up, hit up Judd here and he can take you out there. Uh, I probably shouldn't. I should probably shouldn't advertise too much for you, man. I'm trying to get on the boat with you, and every time we open up a window, you get booked up. So I'm like, maybe I should be like, no, he's booked. Don't call him. Yeah. Also, Luke Donay's on here. Call him up. He's been smashing some nice flounder and redfish lately. So uh, Luke Donay, I will always uh, plug for him. He's he's an incredible captain and is always catching fish. So. Um, yeah, yeah, man, he just shared. He said if you can find clear water and good current, you'll find good inside or good flatties inside. So. Yeah, man, he is a flounder king. Yeah, Forrest Gray said, I've listened to that episode one about ten times. <laughs> really? Nice. Yeah, that's what, he, he, that's what he was saying. I see Tommy Mungo just hopped on. I saw him today out in the ocean. He slid right up. And, like, I think first or second cast smashed a nice flounder in the face. And uh, it was uh, it was pretty cool to see. Running in there, just hopping one cast, and wham, well, fish on. Just crushing it. Yeah, way to go, Tommy. Way to go, Tommy. We could probably have him on the show sometime yeah, as well, man. He's, he's a big fan of the show. I love, love seeing him get on here and contribute uh, in the comments as well. So, well, dude, let's get into it, man. Let's get into a little bit of topwater fishing. Oh, I'm nervous. Um, are you nervous? <laughs> I'm going to hammer you with questions, man. I don't have anybody else to hammer with questions. Um, so we'll see what's up. Okay, cool, man. So everybody's everybody's settled in here. So we got some people on. So once again, guys, welcome to the show. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. If you're listening after this is aired live um, on our podcast or Facebook, you still leave us a comment. Let us know you're watching. Um, and then if you're watching or, or listening on our podcast, rather, be sure to subscribe to that. That way you get updated every time that we update it. So, man, let's go ahead and get into these topwater rigs and, and talk a little bit about it. So I, I guess there's different types of them. And, and right before the show, we are like rushing. We have a guest in the, in the studio, which is your dog. Yeah. And so I was like, Oh, I was like, I hope he doesn't tear through some of the cables. And Justin's like, no, dude, he, he's going to be fine, man. He's like, he'll sit on this couch. And then Judd got up and then he like tore through some cables. He, and then we're like trying it. to put it back together. But it's no, I mean, I, we, we're dog people, so it's all good. We At Eastern Current, we are dog, dog people. Yes, sir. Dog people. All right, cool, man. So, dude, let's talk a little bit about um, the different types. And you got some different types over there as far as like different yeah, types of lures. Here, so, um, a lot of people. I'm leaning over here, guys. Sorry, give me a second. I'm going to pull a couple of these up. Yeah, dude, no worries. We'll so, let you pull some up there. I'd say the most common top water that people are used to fishing, especially in salt water, would be a walk the dog style bait. So this is this is a head and spook. Um, really cool bait. I fish these a lot. These are um, these are walk the dog style baits. Uh, Skitter Walk makes them. Yozuri makes uh, walk the dog. Every, pretty much everyone that makes top waters makes some walk the dog style gotcha. baits. Um, I would say... As far as inshore fishing goes, there's probably not a better style top water to fish than than okay. a walk the dog. And, and so, bait. and so when we're talking about walking the dog for the people listening, yeah, you're talking about when you're retrieving the lure, just a back and forth, left to right, really quick motion. So it's pretty much walking a continual Z. So back forth, back forth, back forth, back forth. So. Gotcha. Um, that's so, all. So kind of like your dog walking back and forth across the road. Yeah, I don't, maybe. I don't know why it's called walk the dog, but it's uh, my it, dog just pulls the heck out of it. So I, I, maybe I like walk the dog. Maybe I'm just, something's pulling on the end of the line. Yeah, for perfect. sure, for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, the walk the dog. So it, I would say is probably the most effective, and I, people are gonna gonna hate on me about that, but okay, maybe the most effective inshore top water. Um, as a guide, what stinks about the walk the dog bait is. It is almost like trying to pat your head and rub your stomach at the same time to work it. It's very awkward okay. at first. Once you get it, it's like riding a bike. Super easy to do. Um, but it, it can be a little tricky there in the beginning. Um, so Head and Spook, Yozuri, Skitter Walk by Rapala. Um, that, that they all make great walk the dog baits. Um, the, the next style that, that's become kind of popular, and it was definitely a bass bait at first, but um, it's called the Whopper Plopper. And this is kind of a prop bait. So there's been other prop baits before the Whopper Plopper. But what it is is the tail 
it's a bait with like a, a spinning tail. So this is on a, on a little bit of a shaft here. Okay. I don't know what you'd call it. So this one's nice for, for clients and people that haven't worked a top water before because all they got to do is throw it out there and to get any type of action, they're just reeling it in this, this tail spinning here. Um, another bait that I've started fishing recently, and this is just a certain one, um, a certain style here of a glide bait. But So this is another just straight retrieve bait. Um, and it, it, it makes, oh, it's, it's all about making that kind of V wake off the front of it. So it's got this bill that sits underwater. This one's articulated here. So it goes back and forth and, okay. and what it does is just pushes a wake off the front of it. So um, did, and to give an idea, all of these top water lures, they're all imitating like dying bait fish or running bait fish. For is the that most what we're part, trying to yeah, imitate? bait fish on the surface, maybe a dying bait fish, maybe an injured bait fish, maybe a stunned bait fish. Uh, but yeah, bait fish on the surface. Now there's certain top waters that might resemble shrimp or other things like that. But yeah, so, but in, in the in the light tackle world, most of them are resembling a injured bait fish. So dude, let's talk about the skitter walks because we got a lot of questions coming in, yep. and so I want to I want to we'll address some of those questions right now. But I, I'm going to hear some questions that I have for yeah. you, and I didn't even tell you I was going to be asking you questions because you can't really ask me questions because I've I only I use like one type of top water and that's it. So yeah. I'm like yeah, yeah. I, I didn't even you know before researching some I didn't even see those there. So what's up? What are you pointing? Oh, at? I was just going to say the one last type you have one over oh, there, the popper. Well, let's see. Hold on. Oh yeah, right here, right before here. We, yeah, before we jump into questions. So this is just a popping style bait. So you're just popping it. It's got a little cupped mouth. They make them for offshore, inshore, everything. So okay, yeah. And this popper. is like reminds me of like a bass bait, I guess. Yep. Yep. And I'm going to show you guys this one here. This is the treat of oh, the don't show. Don't show them yet. Don't I, show them yet. Just a little bit later, you can see this little submarine with an antenna on it. it does something. The, the nerdy tech guy had to bring something to the table tonight. <laughs> and so this, if I can get this thing to work properly, you're going to be amazed. By, well, I don't know if you'll be amazed, but you might be like, that guy's an idiot or that's awesome. So, dude, let's talk about the skitter walk. What, what is the first thing you do when you go to rig this thing up? Like, are you rigging up with like a loop knot? Are you tying it straight to it? Tying to, like, tell me a little bit about how you rig them. How so, uh, with a skitter walk, the big thing is, you know, we were talking about the walk, the dog, the back and forth action of that bait on the surface. And so for me, I, I really like, and I think most people you will find tie a loop knot on there. Okay. Um, and that gives a looser connection from your leader to your bait. So you get a little bit more action there. Um, a lot of people like to use mono as well because mono floats, fluoro sinks, and so that mono keeps that bait up near the surface as opposed to fluoro pulling down on it. That really doesn't uh, matter gotcha. too much with some of these, you know, some of these top waters that float a little bit better. But maybe if you're throwing like a small top water fly or something like that. So you're that. trying to keep the, uh, and this is the only thing, well, hold on, I'll, I'll use this one. So essentially you're trying to keep the nose of it up, like, well, I'll do it in front of the camera. I don't know if you can see it or not. But are you trying to keep the nose up coming through the water? Exactly. So if you about? have like a long leader on there that's sinking down below it and it's a little sloppy, a little choppy, sometimes it can pull that the nose of the bait under, so you're not going to get the the correct action. So. Okay. Gotcha, man. That's cool. So and and you recommend so so braid to mono and and what are you talking about as far as leader length? So I usually run about two feet of leader. Okay. Um, that's pretty it sounds like pretty standard, I guess. Yeah, standard. And, and it just depends on what I'm fishing for and the size of fish as far as the weight. The lighter, the better, I feel like, when you go top water, But I'm not a light leader kind of guy. Like, even if I'm catching a little trout, I'm still at least fishing probably – I'm probably fishing 15 pound. And for, for you know, like normal slot size redfish on a top water, 25 pound is probably what I'm going to be throwing. Okay. Gotcha. They're not leader shy. And if you get a good loop knot in there, it's not going to affect the way your bait works. Now, do you ever put, like, if you get a lot of just trash, like bluefish or something, like hitting your leader or messing yeah, up? Yeah, maybe 30, 40 pound leader. Just jump oh, okay. it up so it doesn't get, get chewed so up. So it doesn't get ripped up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. That was my next question because I'm like, dude, maybe I'll put double the amount of leader on there because if I get beat up a lot, I can just keep moving it down. I won't have to put a new leader on. Right, right. But I don't there's know. No, there's Maybe nothing that's... wrong with that, though, too. Like, just tying a long sectional leader on there, especially if you've got a good joining knot from your braid to your leader. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, that's a that's a good. So that so the walk the dog, and then as far as, so I'm, t I'm trying to think in my mind how I was going to ask you all these questions. So we're, we're rigging it up. We got we got braid to mono, you know, 15 pounds is what you use, and then you're tying that. As 15 a loop, to 25. 15 to 25, and you're tying mm -hmm. it as a loop knot onto your skitter walk. So then when you're presenting this thing, so first of all, is there a difference in like finding fish? Like, are you looking for something? So, you know, we talked a lot about, um, a lot about like artificial fishing and things like that. So you're kind of finding uh, y y like structure and then you're, and then you're tossing to the structure and it's going subsurface and then you're, you know, fishing that way. Like, are you looking for conditions like running bait fish? Like, what are you looking for 
for that? Well, I think first off, it really comes down to, you know, the basics of, well, all right. So a, a lot of times for, for top waters, I think it's important and it's not, this isn't always true, but to throw or, th- or to throw a top water in, in lower light conditions. So early in the morning, you know, maybe till nine, 10 o'clock. And then in the in the evenings, and then maybe if it's cloudy or if you get a storm that rolls through, the, those lower light conditions, I feel like, I think f- to me what it is is it breaks that that top water up a little bit more, makes it look a little bit more natural. When that sun's real high too, you don't see as many fish floating higher in the surface of the water column. You see a lot more fish sitting down deeper in the water column when the sun's up high. And I think that has a lot to do with the bites that you're receiving on a top water plug. They're already up there elevated, and yeah, you're gotcha. working a top water through there. They're more likely to eat it. Um, so low light conditions, not always the case. If it's sunny outside and you see fish floating near the surface, top water is a great, great option. Um, but then, yeah, the other thing is, and it really depends on the fish, redfish, trout there. It's all different stuff you're looking for in gotcha. the water. Um, and we can definitely jump into all this. So what was your exact question again? So, well, I was just asking, like, am I looking for like running bait fish before I want to throw a top water? Like, am I, you know, kind of what can di- I guess my thought was like, okay, if I see a bunch of bait fish just like storming the gates or like running from something, then I'm like, oh, shoot, I want to get in the mess or on the, you know, do I want to get in the edges of those bait fish? I want to pitch it right in the middle of those bait fish. Like, what have you seen that's successful for you? So I feel like a lot of times you see a bunch of bait fish showering. If, if you're not getting an explosion from a, from a predator in those bait fish, Top water might not be the best option. And I've, I've made that mistake a lot of times, throwing a top water. It might be like right now, we've got a ton of mullet going on the beaches. We've got a ton of mullet going on the waterway. You'll see those mullet spook and come out of the water, um, but you're not seeing a blow up. A lot of times, maybe something subsurface is still the key there. Yeah. But if you're seeing those actual explosions from the fish, from the blue fish, from the trout, the red fish, whatever it might be, I think, yeah, like you're like you're saying, that's key. Like that's look to that stuff and be like, all right, we need to throw top water. Yeah, look, they're they're looking up. You know, this is the time to do that. Yeah, so like look for birds diving, look for the yeah, top birds water, diving, like all key. that stuff. And, Any action on the surface is that, and and just because you didn't see a blow up from a fish in the bait fish doesn't mean they're not going to eat a top water. Um, but yeah, any any surface activity is key. I, I, I is I would say for sure. For okay, sure. cool, man. And so let's talk. I'm, I'm trying to find some questions here. Um, try not to have any dead airspace. Apparently, that's a big <laughs> thing when you're doing these. No one wants to hear you're breathing. <laughs> um, so so dude, let's talk about the retrieval process a little bit, mainly for those skitter walks. I know we we're talking about a walk the dog which you said it's it's really like rubbing your head and patting your belly or patting your head and rubbing your belly. I'm not sure which. I can't which even w- say it correctly. Here, let's see if we can do it. Oh, let's just see. Here we go. We're going to pat our head and rub our belly. You can't see if I'm rubbing my belly or not, so it worked out pretty good. I, 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 it used to be way tougher as a kid, I feel like. That was pretty easy. <laughs> yeah, I, but you were doing this, though, and rubbing oh, yeah. your belly. Oh yeah, or maybe you're patting your belly and I don't know. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's what you're doing. You're patting your belly and rubbing your head. Okay, gotcha. So, so dude, so you cast out there, and then your retrieval process. And we were gonna shoot some video. We just didn't have enough time to to do that. Um, but what does that look like? I mean, as far as your your rod, like maybe you can go through some of that. Like what you know, like what are you using for your rod? Um, is it is it like a trout rod, like a light action, medium heavy action? Like what do, what does that look like for you? And I know there's. I don't want to give away too much because I want to ask you because you're the pro here, but Not to the pro. keep that rod tip down in the water or down close to the water, I feel like yeah. it's very important, which is one of the first things that I learned from the person who taught me was like, because I was trying to do the old like fly yeah, fishing, fishing thing. You got all that slack in there. Yeah. So can you talk yeah, a little bit about from that? Rod about tip. the retrieval? Yeah, definitely. So tension from your rod tip to the bait is, is key. Um, like you're saying, when you're fishing your rod tip up, um, every time you bump that that rod tip to move your bait, you're, you're still, you're creating a belly in that line and you have less control of your, of your top water. But yeah, like Billy's saying rod, I like to fish my rod tip low. So if I'm standing facing forward off the front of a boat, throwing a top water, I like my, my bait down across my body to my left towards the water. Some people can work it really well to the right, but when I'm working it backhand like that, I have way less control. My rhythm is way oh, off. Oh, so it's like backhand versus forehand. Yeah, so I it's guess. like a forehand working it okay. across. I'm a right. I'm righty. I'm retrieving. I'm reeling with my left hand, rod in my right hand. So rod to the left of my body, down towards the water. And so what you're doing is it's all about tempo. It's tick, 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 and you're you're moving your rod tip, you know, four to maybe six, seven inches every time that I'm saying that tick. So tick, 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 and you can go faster, slower. And you're reeling. This is where people mess up. They get reeling too fast, 
And so your bait's sliding in as you're trying to tick it and you can't really get the good walking motion. So I tell people that, that the, the reeling should just be fast enough to keep the slack out. So as you're ticking okay. it, the bait should be traveling forward due to your ticking of the rod tip. And the reeling is is uh, is all just to keep that slack out of the line and keep a nice tight line between your rod tip and your bait to keep it working correctly. Okay, got you. So it's almost kind of like, in, from fly fishing terms, once again, it's kind of almost like a double haul in a weird. I mean, the same like action. Oh of like yeah, doing, for sure. Of doing two different things. So you're 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 timing out those two things that don't go together. That don't typically. go together. So they're they're yeah. And I, what I well, I don't know the term. I don't know the drumming term of that. But I guess the cadence you're trying to create, it's like opposite of each other. Almost. For sure. So for you're sure. so you're like kind of you're pulling and reeling while you're getting ready to pull again. Exactly. It's okay. awkward. It's an awkward feeling, and it's like you forget. Cause once you've done it for a while, you forget like, Oh, this was tough to learn. Like it was tough to get this timing down. But yeah. once you get it, it's, you've got it. And do so talking about the cadence and the speed, I mean, so different species, is it different? Like, so like for red drum or redfish rather, if I'm trying to trying to catch a redfish, do you find it's like a quicker retrieve or slower or like, a, or is it like, you know, bass, like I can pop three times and let it sit yeah. and then pop three times and let it sit or, you know, whatever that number is I, I, that I pick, you know, whatever cadence I want. What do you find for redfish? What do you think works the best? Well, I would say for redfish and trout, they're the two main fish inshore that you're throwing a you know a top water for, and they're throwing a, a walk the dog style top water. I would say you can definitely work them the same speed, but if, okay. if if I were to really break it down, maybe with a trout, and you guys comment on the on the live feed, let me know what y'all think. But with a trout, maybe sometimes I'm working it a little bit slower, a little bit wider walks back and forth. Okay. Um, and the redfish a little bit faster. One of the big differences is if I get blown up by a redfish and he misses the top water, I'm not going to stop it whatsoever. I'm going to speed the top water up. A lot of times if you stop a top water or really anything when a redfish is in pursuit, he's going to spook and he's going to not come back and eat it. Um, there are times where that has not been the, the case, but I'd say 90% of the time, so if you get blown up, don't stop it. Work it faster. Just not, keep, not way faster, okay. but speed it up like the mullet's freaked out and he's trying to get out of there. So, but whatever you're doing for redfish, like don't stop that bait or don't they'll, stop they'll it. spook yeah. out. Yeah. yeah. If they're if they're all of a sudden in pursuit, if it slows down or stops, 99% of the time they're going to spook. Now, trout, a lot of times, they'll blow it up. They'll miss it. You can let it sit there for a few seconds and then walk it two or three more times and they'll come up and eat it again. Okay. You do that with a redfish. I mean, there has been times that that's happened and that's worked for me. Yeah. Um, but, but I would say... As a rule of thumb, don't do that. Just keep moving. Keep, keep it moving. Keep speed it, it up a little bit. You don't necessarily have to speed it up, but I think that helps. Helps a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like makes it look like, oh God, I'm running faster. Like I gotta get out of here. Yeah. Okay. Cool, man. That, well, that sounds. That sounds. Um, and Roger just commented. He said, Roger Jones. He's a, he's a, a big viewer of the show. He said, stop and go for trout, which I agree with. You know, you don't have okay. to keep a steady retrieve. The All right, trout man. are a lot more forgiving than yeah. the redfish. Gotcha. So redfish are a little picky. Yeah, they can be. They're they, like they fishing for freshwater trout. It's crazy yeah. with clients on the boat when they're learning how to do it. Like, if you've got one guy that can walk it really well and one guy that can't walk a dog, walk the dog real well, the dude that can walk the dog real well is going to catch ten to one. Okay. On fish, man, so. that's crazy. Yeah. And I guess it's just a test. Like, go out there, find a, a school redfish, or find where bait's blown up, and just like learn how to do it. Because yeah. it, it's not. It doesn't seem like it's now. The other one that you showed us, the whopper popper with the propeller yeah. on it. It seems like that's just a straight throw and retrieve. Is that right? Throw and yeah. retrieve, yeah. And and you can do a steady retrieve, but you can also do like a pulse. You can reel it a few feet, stop it, reel it a few feet, stop it. And okay. the trout, the trout here actually really like these whopper ploppers. This is a larger one. I haven't thrown these for trout. I'm sure they'd crush it, but I've been fishing the little smaller whopper plopper for trout here. Okay. I really like it. The cool thing about a top water is it's such a great search bait. It makes a lot of noise. It's real visible on the surface and it's a great bait to cover water. Great bait for if you know the fish are there, but also a great search bait. Oh, got gotcha. you. Just, for fish just looking for like blow ups or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, so dude, say if I go and I read fish, and so I was talking to somebody about this the other day. Of course, you want to, you know, it's like you want to catch fish on top water. Um, but say if I got a bunch of blow ups and I can't, because I, I hear people all the time go like, man, I go top water fishing all the time. Stuff's like striking at it, but I just can't hook anything. What do you think's going on there? I mean, can you? I, I guess you'd have to be there to diagnose it, but for like, sure, just from your, have you had that happen with customers? It's like, man, they just couldn't hook it if you, like, if you gaffed it, they couldn't still hook it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think one of the biggest mistakes for people is, and and it doesn't sound like this is the, the fully the question, but when you get blown up on a top water, no matter what it is, do not set the hook right when you see the blow up. You've got to uh, gotcha. keep working that bait like it never ate it until you feel pressure. 
So oh, if you're okay. working it and, and, you know, it gets blown up, I kind of, if, if I really know he ate it well, I'll slowly start reeling, but I'm not swinging my rod tip until I feel pressure because one, if you set the hook right when he blows it up, you're going to rip it out of his mouth and 40 feet away from him and he's never going to see it again. Gotcha. But two, if he misses it and you, and you rip it out, then all of a sudden it's out of I his strike the, zone again. Yeah. I bet so, that's what's happening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So keeping it in that bite zone. So in, unless you have that pressure, then you reel down and, and can set the hook. Dude, telling a fisherman to like chill out and it's not tough. set the hook. I'm like, golly, man, you can tell me anything, but that's the tough one. It's I do it all the time too, still when I'm fishing top water. I'll pull it out of their mouth sometimes when they eat it. So so retrieve, retrieve, it blows up, just like wait or don't put wait, a don't pressure. stop it. Just keep okay. working it. Like you like gotcha. pretend that fish didn't even blow it up until you feel the pressure from that fish holding it in his mouth. And then that's set when you can the swing hook. it. And that brings up another key thing. We'll talk about this a little bit later, but I think rod is so important in topwater fishing. Okay. The rod, yeah. It, well, it really just has to do with. Well, I guess we'll kind of jump into that. With yeah, the, we can jump into it. We're just on. we're just talking. Just I, talking. I, I probably blast you with more questions than you expected. Way more. But I was just <laughs> thinking, like, oh man, I I don't know that much about topwater. So I'm gonna fire per- some of you here in a second. This is per- perfect. <laughs> perfect. I'm ready for it anytime. So. so- Go ahead, man, and you share what, what you're going to share, and then I'm going to look at some of these questions, yeah, and we'll, we'll hit some of these questions, too. Perfect. So what I was going to say is, and this isn't the end-all, be-all, but I've kind of learned this from watching a lot of, I, I have a, a pretty uh, newborn or reborn desire or passion for bass fishing, and so I watch this YouTube channel called Tactical Bassing, and they just dive into Hey, don't like be promoting other people's channels, man. Every, Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> it is. A, they dive so deep into every little nuance of every bait and every style of fishing. And so I've learned a lot from it that I've brought over into the saltwater world. But a soft tip, a really soft tip rod is important for topwater. Not only for, you know, we talk about it being a great search bait and being able to cast a long distance and, and drum up some fish that you might not know are in the area. But when you're fishing trebles, a soft tip is so important because a lot of times you don't have it pinned in that fish like a J hook is. You've got maybe, you know, one or two hooks, then another two hooks, the other side of the face. So having a really forgiving soft rod tip that when that fish pulls, it's not just putting a ton of immediate pressure on their face. Um, and I've definitely seen that. I fish some stiffer rods sometimes and and you'll pull top waters out of fish's mouths that you have feel like hooked really well and you fish a nice little soft tip rod. You still want a good thick butt on that rod, good heavy fighting, you know, bottom section, but the, the soft tip is key to, to for any treble baits. Trout fishing with mirror lures or anything like that, like a softer tip to keep those those uh, those delicate treble hooks in a fish's face. You hook up really well with treble hooks, but it's harder to keep them pinned than a J hook. Okay. Or a single hook. Gotcha, man. So let, we'll, let's jump into a couple of these questions, yep. which we talked about rigging. We talked about knots there for just a second. But this person wants to know, like, do you do a uni or an Albright knot? Like, what do you for the braid to leader connection, yeah, yeah braid, braid to leader. To leader. Yeah. I usually do a uni to uni. Um, I, I tie an Albright sometimes, but but usually uni to uni. Okay, cool. Yeah, I have tried the FG knot some too, but I don't trust my FG knots. Griffin wants to know, can you catch uh, flatties on top water? So I've had two different <laughs> flounder caught on my boat on top water, and I have I've not personally caught any, and I've seen especially this summer a lot of flounder blowing up on mullets. So when those yeah. flounders sit real shallow, like. Luke was talking about how shallow they'll sit in that first episode, yeah. four or five, six inches of water. You'll see them blowing mullet up. Like two days ago, we saw a flounder sky out of the water on a mullet. Dude, that's they'll insane. definitely eat top water, but you got to fish that really shallow stuff where you wouldn't necessarily even think there was redfish. Yeah. There might be a flounder there that would eat a top water. So we just broke the myth. Can you catch flounder on top water? You can. The answer is yes. Yeah. You're not going to catch a flounder on top water in deep water. It's got to be sh- really shallow. <laughs> He's not going to come up from six feet and eat a top water flounder. I was fishing 50 feet out by this wreck, and this <laughs> thing just came up and wrecked my bed. A bait. school of flounder on the surface swam by. <laughs> do flounder, they do congregate now. If you catch one, keep fishing there, right? Yeah, exactly. I learned that from, from the video. Go watch that first video. We should just have him back. What are you doing right now, Luke? Why don't you come on over here? Luke, Let's head on over here. Flounder. Let's do another one. We only got f- like five more days to fish for flounder. Let's crush this thing. Uh, okay, so that was a top water. So any type of colors? I know we got a variety of colors here, but is there anything? I can't share my secret color, man. Oh, okay, I'm just kidding. I didn't I know that was can. a fisherman's secret. We got to be careful on this show, man. We're gonna get you in trouble. There is a lot of good colors. There really are. I think probably my go-to is the gold mullet skitter walk. Um, it's it's. See if he has one here. He's one. reaching down to the pile. So this is one that's been super chewed up. It doesn't really have any color to it anymore. This is what it's supposed to look like. This is a whole different plug. Here, let me bring got, your cam, your main. Here we go. There we go. See so if you can it, see it a little bit better. It's got that gold side to it. I'm going to hold it right here because it's actually more in focus. 
um, gold, orange belly, black on top. So you can kind of see this one's been through the ringer here. But um, that's my favorite color. I catch trout, redfish, everything on that. But I, when they eat it, I, I can't say that I've really I can't say that I've really felt like one color outfit. Maybe the gold mullet, but a lot of times for redfish, if they're eating a topwater plug, if they're going to come up and eat it, they're going to eat. They're going to probably eat whatever. I, gotcha. I like to fish something with a little flash, not too crazy, some natural color to it. There's like some good silver, black color out and, there. Too. And are you fishing top water? Is it more like open water? Are you fishing docks? Like you fishing anything with top water? Like what does that look like? So for me, the main I've, I wrote down some things on our on the oh, sheet cool. here. But I probably should just look at the sheet. I well, answer I'm all just, my questions. I'm just trying to to make sure I don't forget <laughs> it here. Um, but for me, th- there's for redfish, it's different for trout and shore. Um, for redfish, I really like points. I like the eddies behind points if the water's not too shallow, not too deep, um, where they're they're out of the current. Oh, gotcha. Um, I like fishing around oyster bars. I like fishing scalloped pockets along a shoreline. So, um, you know, if you've got a straight shoreline, then you got a little cove that kicks in. Fish, yeah. Maybe not even a big cove. Maybe the cove is, you know, the size of two trucks. You know, it's not a very big big area. Yeah. Um, any little difference. And I really like areas where you might have a bay with a lot of little broken grass islands, oyster clumps. Um, just a lot of coverage. Just a lot, a lot of, of coverage. Areas where fish can be holding out off the bank so much. Because you, you're not going to be able to fish right up on the bank with a top water unless you're trolling, yeah. motoring, tro- trolling motoring or pulling right along it and throwing long cast down the edge, gotcha. which is another good to- or good tactic. But areas where there's lots of different little pockets and edges and points that they can be holding on. Okay, for so redfish. And, and so when you so you ever do around docks at all? I don't know if you answer that. I've caught some redfish on on top water around docks, but not that's not not as many. Not as many. No, okay. usually if I'm dock a little fishing, deeper, I guess, right? A little typically? deeper, yeah. Typically, gotcha. you know, the ends of those docks are deeper. I know people will, uh, definitely catch them on top water um, around docks and whatnot. But I for for some reason, whenever I dock fish, I'm usually bait fishing. You're usually bait fishing. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. And and dude, so I, oh oh yeah, so let's talk about fishing grass. So this is all treble hook stuff right here, and most of that that you have. Yep. But I've seen some people tell me like, "Hey, man, just switch that out for a single hook. Yeah. That way, it doesn't get caught on grass." Is that something that you do if you're going to fish a really grassy spot? I don't know if you had one with you or not. This whopper plot oh, yeah, has got hooks on it, um, and I got this front one rigged. Or no, I got it rigged right. Sorry. Um, yeah, I, I've messed around with the J hooks for sure, and I, I think that's key. Like you're saying, like you can slide if you're if you got an area where you're throwing it up towards the grass and throwing yeah. it there a lot, comes out way easier with these J hooks, but. One thing that I found, even if you're throwing trebles, like the big, excuse me, the big problem is usually people will throw it up there and they'll start pulling it really hard to try to get it out. Uh, and gotcha. that's really doing nothing but setting the hook into the grass. Setting, so just <laughs> so like you're just like, easy. you're just bearing it. Yeah. Just real, real soft and easy. And it'll oftentimes slide out of there. Yeah. I do. So I, the first time I ever went top water fishing in here in North Carolina was with Luke Tippett. I can't, yeah. dude. He just had like two rods basically because I'd always have one stuck in the grass. <laughs> He'd just be like ripping it out and like handing it back to me. And I'm like, dude, you're like, how are you doing that? <laughs> That's awesome. So, yeah, man. Uh, uh, dude, so let's talk about, so we talked about little docks and, and all that. Let's, um, so there's a little myth in my brain, and maybe you can break this myth or say true or false or whatever according to your experience. But most people that I fish with have been like, dude, well, I'm like, let's go topwater fishing. They're like, oh, we got to go really early in the morning. It's got to be overcast. Can't be any light. The conditions have to be almost kind of like fly fishing, like real low wind and things like that. So let's talk about the overcast conditions or morning light. Like, is, is Do you find that that's like a huge decision maker if you pull out a topwater lure or not? Yeah, it is a pretty big decision maker. Um, I, I think low light's pretty key. I, I don't get nearly as many bites and, and granted I, you know, maybe it's because I've been so sucked into that myth that I'm like, Oh, you know, the sun's up, it's the middle of the day. I'm not gonna throw a top water. Um, I've caught redfish on top water in the middle of the day and bright sun, but I, I don't feel like I do nearly as well. I think that that's, that's, it's a myth. that's pretty true. The, you know, you're not going to do quite as well in bright sun midday that overcast or early morning, late evening is definitely definitely key for top water. And I wonder if it's just like because those bait fish and everything are moving in the morning, like they're all I out. think so. They're I, all out for breakfast, man. That's what they're doing. They're all trying to get their. their everybody's hungry. <laughs> everybody's hungry. Well, like uh, fishing, you know, in a lot of in a lot of ways is is really good in the morning. Like morning, yeah. that morning bite is always is really good. But 
my my big theory is that it, the lower light breaks that top water up a little bit more. Gotcha. Like it does, it's not as they can't see it quite as well. They know it's there, but it's not like this bright sun beating down on this little stick that's moving through the water. It's gotcha. really what a top water is. So okay, gotcha. And, and then as far as like wind conditions, are you out there like no matter what you'll throw it, or you gotta have certain wind conditions? As long to... as I can work that top water. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. It's I would used to be scared of the wind to throw a top water, but they eat the mess out of it in the wind. The so if the chop the isn't that heavy, you're like, yeah. fine, let's do this. Yeah, if, if you can work that top water effectively, I think just like how the light, like low light, breaks that top water down yeah. a little bit. Oh yeah, I the, chop the chop on the surface through, yeah. of the water breaks it down a little bit more. You know? That makes sense, man. Yeah. And I know a big thing when I for whatever don't reason don't be scared of the wind. <laughs> whenever I fish top water for some yeah. reason, man, I swear I always get wind knots. And so I was looking this up the other day because I'm like. The last time I went topwater fishing, I was like, I get this huge wind knot. And I was like, man, what the heck do I do? And so I looked it up, and this guy was showing, like, how he would, like, he would cast. He would flip the bail and then just pull the line tight right then and then reel and start working it. That way, oh, that's sweet. That way it wouldn't, like, get any any of that slack in the, in the in, you know, on the bail because yeah, it's yeah. like, if that folds up, that's where you're going to get your wind knot or whatever. Yeah, that's super so, smart. I've never done that. I'll have to so I don't know what it is about. Maybe it's just the heavier thing that I'm throwing. I don't know what would cause that, but maybe I just suck at casting, which is totally true. I mean, that's pretty true for me. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you cast. You definitely don't suck at casting. Oh, man. So anyway, dude, well, that's um, – let's see if we have any more questions in the – We had one right here that I saw that was – Yeah, go for it. It was uh, saying, do you prefer to fish parallel? This was Keegan – Postima, I think if I might have said that wrong, I apologize. But do you prefer to fish parallel to the bank or retrieving it away from the grass? Which is a great question. I really like both. Okay. It really depends on the type of bank you're fishing. So if it's a long straightaway bank with with not a lot of you know oyster bars or any type of cover out off that bank, like you're saying, throwing parallel down that bank is is how you want to be um, fishing it for redfish. And then um, if if you've got some more points and some oyster bars out off the bank throwing up towards the bank a little bit. A lot of times I'm kind of going right in between and working down a bank where I'm quartering across or quartering up towards the bank. So throwing like if the bow is 12 o'clock facing, you know, parallel to the bank, kind of throwing it up across. Okay. Uh, is, is, is how I like to do it. So dude, is top water only for inshore as far as saltwater goes? No, there is a lot of, uh, a lot of potential near shore offshore. Um, there's some, some really cool opportunities even here in North Carolina for some offshore fishing. You had a pretty, Dude, I did epic offshore day. I, we we went fishing with uh, Rick Cross. We're gonna do this this off this of winter, dude. I know we fall. need to get him on the show, but we went on this blackfin tuna trip, um, and dude, it was like amazing. I don't I don't even know how far out we were. Maybe thirty miles or something. Maybe not even. I I don't know. We were like we were out there though, and dude, so we're fishing, and he's teaching us how to jig up these, you know, like jig up these blackfin tuna, and dude, we were crushing. I, I was like exhausted. And then, um, and, and so, I, I don't know if I said it, it was Rick Croson with Living Water, so if you guys want to go do this trip I'm talking about, give this guy a call. One of one of my favorite fishing trips. And so anyway, dude, he pulls out this, um, did, it's, it's almost something like this, but you know, obviously bigger, so maybe even something like, not quite this size. Like a chugger but, style? Like dude, a popper style? It, it was just, it was massive. And he's throw, he throws it out there, right? And he's showing us how to work it. I mean, he's being super aggressive, and all of a sudden, this sailfish just explodes and like grabs a hold of it. And I wish I'd have got the video, man. Actually, I have the video, and if Zach Kirby's on here, he could probably share it as well. But man, it was just incredible to see that that sailfish was like hooked up on there. So That's I was awesome. like, I don't even know if this is normal or if this is weird. Usually, that's not. the downfall of a guide day. If yeah. you're like showing them how to work something, and you hook a nice fish on it. Really? No, I, we're all yeah, we're all pumped. It. We're like, dude, we would no, I'm never saying, like, if I hook, if I, at the beginning of the day, I hook a fish, like showing them how to work a top yeah. water. You be sometimes don't catch any more fish. Brian Pearson <laughs> said it was a Halco popper. Halco popper. Sweet. That sounds about right. Yep. That sounds about. He would know. He would totally know more than I would. So, um, but yeah, dude, I, th I think Rick Croson was in my neighborhood. I'm gonna stalk him. And see. <laughs> You, you should. You dude, should. Yeah, we gotta get. You a should get in one of his hatches and just pop out when you get out to the Gulf Stream. Like, hey, what's up, man? <laughs> hey, what's up, man? I thought I was talking about you on the show. I just wanted to come out here. Uh, yeah. So Griffin said Rick is a great guy. Knows his stuff. We went out with him. Uh, didn't get any blackfin. Sadly. Oh man, that is sad, dude. We put so many in the boat. I was like tired for days afterward. My wife's like, you cannot be tired after fishing. I'm like, yeah. Well, you go on that trip and tell me if you're tired because we were fighting sharks. And and doing all kinds of stuff out there, man. It was so much fun. But Griffin, is that who you caught those African pompano with? Let us know. 
we're going to start asking you guys some questions. I guess I'm doing that today. <laughs> like, hey, did you catch those African pompano with Rick? Big poppers made in Australia, Brian Pearson said. So, um, cool, man. So, what? So you can catch. I, I'm just looking at your list here. So, yeah. So, near shore, um, you know, you I've caught Spanish on top water off the beach, especially this time of year when they're eating those mullet. You can catch albacore on top water plugs. You can catch bonito on top water. It really depends on what those near shore fish are feeding. If they're feeding on smaller glassy minnows and little baits. Very hard to get them on top water, but when they're eating larger baits, you can catch them on top water for sure. Get out a little further, amber jacks. You can catch Kobe on top water, um, sailfish, which uh, is pretty gotcha. awesome. Yeah, that's sick, dude. Tuna, such um, a show. So much cool stuff to catch off the beach on top water. I do a lot less of that. I'd say my main, if I go out in the ocean and fish top water, it's amber jacks on big halco poppers. Dude, I bet that would be so sick. It's fun, very tiring, like you're saying that too. Even it just working so those big poppers is tiring, man. You get, it's a workout. Yeah, man, that's. Um golly yeah you do I'm, I'm like so i'm like just sitting here like oh man i need to go out there and figure that out and crush it let's see uh, uh, jason said late night but here what's up fellas jason thanks for joining us man a little bit late but thanks for joining us no big deal I, dude it's already at 8 45 that's Dang. insane well should we just jump blast into uh, a little bit of uh talking about like trout fishing inshore trout fishing yeah dude let's do okay let's cool. talk about that because trout fishing's here and they've been eating top water good it's it, fall i think it's gonna be good so fall. same style baits top water red drum top or top water redfish top water trout same. i would say trout sometimes are a little more forgiving even yeah like the whopper plopper i'd say works better for trout than okay. it does for redfish the little popper i think works a little better for redfish but still 99 percent of the time i'm throwing a walk the dog style bait like we were talking about um yeah they're a lot of the same baits same sizes i feel like a lot of times people go way down in size for trout but sometimes those big like head and one knocker is one of my favorite trout plugs that uh, my buddy ben chesney turned me on to to fish for trout and i'd never ben, fished it. he doesn't know how to fish what are you not he kidding. is uh he's such a fishy dude he is a fishy dude so but yeah the, it's very similar um and and like roger was saying earlier on the comments that 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 retrieve and pause works pretty darn well for trout as well um i think the big thing is you're just fishing slightly different areas so trout oh, gotcha. here in North Carolina, they really like current. Um, a, a lot of area, other areas like you know, in, in Texas and in Florida and Georgia and some of these other states, you don't necessarily need current at all to catch trout. But here, they're very keyed in on on sitting in current. Um, and so some of the areas I like to target trout in is like um, those current seams. So if you're if you're sitting in a creek, the tide's falling. Let's say the tide's falling, and you've got the creek coming around a corner, and you've got like a little bit of a point there you're going to have a seam where that moving water is coming off that point. And then there's going to be some slower water, more still water on the inside of that point. Okay. Um, and sense. so fishing that inside seam, fishing that softer, slower water near the fast water with the top water is, is a very productive area. Also the tail out. So you have a seam and as that seam continues down the bank or down the Creek towards the end of it, th that's another really good area that I, I would say you, you catch trout on and that. That's kind of a hard thing to explain over, just yeah. boy, I me mean, talking. It's something you really need to see on the water to, to fully understand. Gotcha. So, so you got a little bit of a, a fast, I'm just trying to make it make sense in my mind too. So you got a little bit of a faster current and then maybe on the inside, you got a little bit of a slower current. Yeah. Exactly. It's like NASCAR, man. Come yeah, on. We all know, exactly. we know how this works. Exactly. Um, so but just like freshwater too. Yeah. Like freshwater yeah trout I was going to say, cause freshwater trout, I mean, they, they typically, you know, sit in the slower moving water and wait for something to come by and just, dash out and grab it yeah. as opposed to I, I guess not i guess no fish like really just works the current and tries to chase something through the current so they're all sitting in those eddies and they're just pouncing on exactly. stuff as it comes by exactly. so they're just like doing like they're the predator just waiting for the prey to come by exactly so they're, they're just smart fishing those spots. they're using it like a conveyor belt of food to bring them food so yeah dude, i probably caught more speckled trout on accident than anything else like i've always been going out like targeting red drum like i'm gonna try to catch red try to catch red yeah. and then i'll like catch i'll get in one of those situations tide is falling out and then i'm fishing you know like one of those creek mouths and all of a sudden just start ripping and, and then i got a buddy of mine he dude he destroys trout yeah on, I gotta find out what he does because he uses one of those slow sinking. Um, I don't even know what it is, but anyway, man, he he like pitches it out of there, it's, like a hard bait, like a mirror lure. Yeah, yeah, like a mirror lure, but it's like and it's pretty small. I mean, it's like this big. Oh, like, that Yozuri 3D swim minnow is that what it is? Mate, dude, I have no idea. But I was fishing on some soft plastics. He was fishing that 
he was pulling one up every cast. I didn't catch one that morning. <laughs> and it was like a cold winter morning. Like, yeah, yeah. like, dude, we're like freezing. I'm like, I don't even know why I'm on this boat right now. It was so cold. And then he's just like laying into these trout. And I'm like, I hate oh, this that's guy. Fun. That's but so fun. anyway, um, so, so yeah, man, that's a good information to know. Like, Hey, look for that, that, that slower, steadier, yeah, you definitely. know, water and kind of fish that line. So can you really like, will you be able to see like that, those two lines distinctly when you're out there? If it's calm, if it's the winds calm, you can see yeah. them like night and day. But when it, yeah, as the wind crazy. picks up, the, the windier it is, the harder it is to see those seams and whatnot. Yeah. So you kind of know where they are. As you've seen them, you, you're like, all right, there's going to be a seam here. There's going to be like you can you can just know by the way the water's moving where it should be slower and faster. Yeah. Um, but another big one that that people overlook, like that, you know, right up behind the point where the seam is really evident, is 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 a big one, but way down to the end of that tail out where the, the it kind of blends back together. So the tail oh, okay. out is the end of a seam or the end of like a riffle in a trout in trout water. Okay. Gotcha. Um, that's another great spot to, to catch trout at the end of a seam on, on, on a tail out like that. So, um, gotcha. man, it's such good information, dude, for sure. Hopefully you don't get beat up by all the other guides out there. <laughs> no, <laughs> just kidding. Like, dude, shut up, Judd. You're telling all our secrets. I've worked out a few times lately, so I'll be, I'm ready to take them. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> we'll just, dude, that'll be a show. We'll just line them up and see who wins. Like one punch to the face. See how long I can go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody gets one punch. That'd be super funny, man. I would be dead. <laughs> There's a lot of guides here. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Griffin says, I got a she-dog for trout after watching some Texas guys, but haven't caught any trout with it. Uh, is it the higher pitch rattle? This, I don't fish the she-dog too much, but that's just, you know, you get used to fishing what you're used to. Definitely a higher pitch. I, I've caught um, redfish on it. I don't know if I've caught trout on a she-dog, but I know people catch catch trout on it have you been i would say the best thing to do is is get in an area where you are catching trout on top water maybe with a different plug and test them back and forth and see if you're getting some more bites on one than the other i don't think that high pitch should really affect the trout too much gotcha um any fish for the most part if they're going to come up and look at it and eat and eat it there it doesn't really matter too much but if you're struggling with it try throwing something that's a little bit quieter and uh and, and leave the she dog in your boat for uh for redfish Gotcha. Uh, so, do, so let's see. Brian Pearson was asking, um, which I think we covered this. He said, tie it straight to the eye or loop knot. So for the loop knot, he tying that loop knot to every single um, top water that you showed us over there earlier in the show. Yeah, I'm fishing a loop knot on every top water for the most gotcha. part. And you'll see some guys that'll that'll do a snap swivel on the end of their line and, and clip them into those top waters if they're fishing a lot of different top waters. I don't like that, but but that's something you can do as well. But yeah, I'm tying a loop knot. I call what's tie what's called a tarpon loop knot. And you're making a figure eight in the line. Then you go through the eye of the hook. Then you chase it back through the figure eight. And then you slide that down and then you tie a uni above it and cinch it. And it's, it's a really strong. Dude, you're going to have to show knot. me that. Cause I just tie like an old, you know, whatever I can make it loopy looking. That's it. <laughs> loopy looking. The loopy looking knot. That's all I got. <laughs> I like it. Uh, I like it. Dude, I know another trick that I that I learned. I haven't used it yet, but I wish I had a better um a better well, it's okay. I can toss you one. Maybe I got one. Uh, yeah, toss me one with the hooks. Hold on a second. I'm going to turn around and grab one. I'm not going to catch that. Are you crazy? That's true. Yeah, travel hooks. Watch out. Okay, yeah. So here we go. Here we go. So on the eye of this um of this top water right here, I've seen a guy on YouTube and he literally would tie straight to the loop or straight to the eye here like four times and cut it off until like there was four knots up into the middle of the eye. And then he would tie his loop knot uh, or not his loop knot, but he would tie right to the eye above that fourth knot. And he like swore that it would like keep this out of the water or maybe he tied it under. I'm sorry. That wouldn't make any sense tied above. So maybe he tied it under four knots and that way it wouldn't go above and, and dip down. Oh, that's so, crazy. So it would like stay up like that. So I've never like, spent that much time tying one on, but that's, that's cool. I like I that. I never idea. even thought of it. I was like, I'm going to try it next time I go. I'm, I'm going to try it and just see if I, you know, cause I mean, I wouldn't know anyway. We, we probably need to do a video of like, Hey, this is what it's supposed to look like because uh, mine just looks pretty crappy. <laughs> yeah. That's, that is really interesting. I love when people take so, something to like the next level like that. I really yeah, they're pretty, cool. pretty interesting, man. So if anybody's ever tried that before, um, so we talked a little bit about treble hook replacements. Uh, John wants to know, is there any type of brand or hook size that you recommend replacing them with? Oh man. I, I can't even remember who makes them. I haven't replaced them in a while. I, it, it might be, uh, what, it might be Gamagatsu that makes the, the, the majority of those replacement hooks, but, um, I'm not sure. I think most of the brands make them now. I, I don't really, 
have a, a professional opinion that I, I feel like I could, I don't know enough about the, the replacement hooks. I usually just gotcha. keep the trebles on there. I do replace the treble hooks on some of my, uh, some of my top water plugs. Um, I haven't done that in a while either, but if I'm fishing a smaller plug for a bigger fish, sometimes I'll just put a heavier wire. Um, uh, all the brands make, make good hooks, but put a heavier gauge wire hook on there just to, so you're not going to bend it out. Maybe if you're throwing a little plug for a bull red fish or yeah. throwing a plug for a tarpon or something like that, where you need those nice stout hooks. I, I have noticed though, the mirror lures come with much stouter hooks than all the other ones, much better hooks. Yeah, like dude, they do, man. They make a good product. Yeah. They from, make a really good product. From what I've, what I've seen, they're not a sponsor. We don't get any, we don't get any monies for telling you that we just like them. But if anybody knows how we can get some money from mirror lure by talking about them, let anybody, us know. if anybody knows the president of mirror lure, have them call me at nine one zero. No, <laughs> um, cool. So let's see here. Let's see what other kind of questions we have, uh, kind of getting down to like the last four minutes. Let's talk about what you got sitting over there on oh your desk. Gosh, I want to hear about this. Let thing. me see if I can get this thing to connect. I haven't used it in forever. So to give you a little backstory, I'm going to try to do two things at one time. So this is a, this is called Eco Popper. And so this is a uh, top water popper really designed for bass. It's a, it's a company out of Israel. And I used to work at a fishing publication here in town. And I called these guys like, I don't know, man, probably like 15 or 20 times to get them to advertise. And they, they, they told me no, uh, but they, the owner of the company, um, he said, Hey, I want you guys to, um, you know, I want to come visit with you and you're so aggressive and call me. I want to give you one of these things that way, you know, if you're like this passionate about it, maybe you could help us out and, and help us sell some. So I haven't done anything with it in like a year and a half almost. Uh, so this is, um, the, this is, this is me helping those guys out. This is me promoting their product. So this thing is solid. So this is a little antenna. It has its own Wi-Fi connection. It's like, <laughs> it'll connect right to your phone. And so I'm going to try to connect it here. There's like a little remedy to, to connecting it properly. So I'm going to see if I can get it to connect. And then I have my camera or my phone plugged in to my um, computer here. And I want to, once I get it connected, I'll switch it over. Uh, but as you can see, and I'll just put this on my main camera here. That way we can check it out. But this is actually like a GoPro style camera. And I think this is their one of their... Um, and I'm not really sure. I think this is, might be one of their prototypes or one of their first releases. And so anyway, it has a little camera in there. You can't really see it uh, on our camera. Uh, but it's essentially you can fish it. You, you can see here you can put hooks on it or you can fish it hookless. And then this bite, uh, bite cam, will. I don't know what they call it. That's what I call it. Uh, you can actually see a fish come on and it'll. you can record or take pictures on your iPhone. Uh, I'm not sure if it's like... Man, I wish this thing was stinking connect. It's like driving me nuts right now. Hold on a second. See if I can get it. Because I've talked it up now. Like, I have to He had it on it before the show, and it was working great. Oh, dude, it was awesome. I was, like, biting into it and doing all kinds of weird stuff with it. So, um, But anyway, I, I actually talked to Rick Croson about this at a fishing school and showed it to him. And, and we're like, dude, we got to go tuna fishing with this thing to see. But it's really made for bass. I mean, it's a pretty honking lure, man. Like, look at – I don't know how big this – this is but it's pretty <laughs> it's a big lure I mean, bass it has a, to be hungry to come up and eat that it's thing. big man you're gonna catch a big bass on this thing let me reset this app because they have an app for it as well uh which once again i haven't messed with this thing in so long i'm probably doing a bad job at demoing it probably w would connect properly if i knew what i was doing and what's cool billy was saying before is like the way that thing's set and weighted out to sit so it's kicked down so it's got a real wide angle view underwater oh, yeah here we go here we go. I got it connected. So I'm going to show you guys the iPhone screen here. Uh, so you can see that's my phone screen that you're seeing live. And this is the camera in the tail. So I'm going to bring up, dude, this could be its own little video here. I'm going to bring up my other camera. Oh, hold on a second. Here we go. All right. And if anybody's listening to this on our podcast, I apologize. You can't see this, but go check our, our YouTube video out. Um, it's going to be up there tomorrow as well. So you can see Judson over there in the dark corner. What's up? Here's our little camera. Uh, and this is the camera right there. So if the fish comes up and, and I'm just looking at it on my you iPhone screen. You should pretend to be the fish. Let's see what you got. <laughs> so I'm going to eat this. There you go. So you can watch the bite. Uh, and you can fish this thing hookless, or you can fish it with uh, with hooks on it. But super cool. I think they actually sell these, uh, I don't know, if like Walmart or, or whoever carries them. Uh, but pretty neat. Uh, I would fish this hookless because I think they run like 180 bucks. <laughs> 
hooks or something yeah, crazy. Yeah, fishing a hookless too. Um, and but, with like 100 pounds. <laughs> but pretty cool. And it records. You can't, uh, let me get back on my, just my phone app. Let me get rid of this thing. Uh, so you can record. You can see it's got a picture there. You can take a photo or you can shoot a video. Uh, and then also you can turn it sideways. So this is great for all you guides out there who get kids on. Their dad can fish. They can watch on their <laughs> iPhone. Has its own dedicated <laughs> Wi-Fi. I didn't look at this thing. It's just crazy, isn't it? That is crazy. Uh, it has its own dedicated Wi-Fi um, system. So, yeah, as long as this little nubbins is out of the water, then, yeah, you're solid, man. That's pretty – that's it. That's That's what cool. it does. Uh, and obviously this thing pushes quite a bit of water. I don't see, think, I don't know if you can see that concave there, but man, just pretty fun little toy. Uh, so we got to get that out and make some videos with it and see what's up. Most certainly. So cool, man. Well, dude, that's my sales pitch for those guys. That's a, <laughs> that's eco popper. You guys can just Google that and check it out. Um, uh, man, I think we covered a ton of information, probably started out a little sporadic cause I, I know you had your list and I'm just like uh, blasted into it. So that's I the problem with me making a list. When I have a list, I'm like, I get so nervous when I leave the list because I'm so ADD, <laughs> I feel like I'm forgetting everything. But cool, man. So I, so if you guys have any more questions, anybody that's tuning in, we're, we'll hang out for a couple more minutes here. We gave away our uh, catch of the week already. Uh, and we decided that we're going to just do one prize giveaway. We're like having trouble keeping up with everything that's going out. So we're going to just kind of hang out at catch of the week for now. Uh, we're not going to do any special giveaways on this show, but we'll we'll jump back into it. So, yeah. and we want to hear you guys' feedback, man. If you, if you guys, uh, it's topics you want to talk about, stuff we didn't cover. Uh, you know, we're I think our heart. I shouldn't say our heart, but it is our heart to yeah. to build a community uh, of fishermen, of of anglers, of you know, just build a good community and bring you our listeners and our viewers. Uh, you know, information that you want, that you're really interested in. Uh, and we try to do it. We try to be, you know, we're trying to keep up with what's going on in the water. So it's just not putting out topics, but it's, you know, we're going to get into a trout series here in probably a couple weeks. Uh, next week we got Luke Do or not Luke Donay, Luke Tippett. Too many Lukes live around here, man. What's up with that? <laughs> so we got Luke Tippett and Jordan Nason. Am I yeah. saying yeah, and they're gonna come on and we're gonna talk about tournament fishing. What does it what does it take to prepare for a tournament? What does it mean to fish a tournament? What happens if your motor breaks on the water at six AM when you're doing a tournament? <laughs> we're gonna talk about all those things uh next week. So we can uh, definitely get into into that with those guys uh, that is next week right the third yep next yeah, week the third. next week yeah so. that's gonna be a fun show those are awesome dudes they got a youtube channel they're they're crushing it they, yeah, they catch the mess out of the youtube the channel fish. media business they're doing a little bit of everything yeah definitely. so um definitely definitely gonna be a great episode definitely uh cliff says uh, maybe we can do a dissection of the google maps episode we could definitely we we're actually looking at that trying to we figure were. out the technology we to do a good job with it because we can me and billy have been discussing that one we're it's a nervous one to do but it's one we definitely want to do we don't want to make too many people mad but i think there's so many good yeah. things to dive into and look into in the google maps that people overlook and and are missing that's right there at their fingertips yeah absolutely and we, you know if we do it it'll be a destination not here yeah, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll like, pick areas of water. And... We'll pick areas of water that's out of the state of North Carolina because you know we we want to help the guides here as well, and, and that's why we bring them on our show to help sure. promote their business. So we're not here to out spots or do anything like that. So um, you know, for anybody that's watching, like, oh, getting nervous, don't don't get nervous. We'll be all right. We're we're smart dudes and try yeah. to keep it <laughs> keep it fair for everybody. Keep it fair because uh, we want definitely want our local guides to win and and do that. So. Um, Awesome, guys. Well, hey, it says another great show. Thank you. Ocean is looking good Saturday morning. Hope to get back into the mahi. Uh, we caught some last Saturday around the sea buoy in the southeast bottom. So, cool, man. That sounds like it. That is awesome. Sounds good. We'll have to do an offshore show. Yeah, we need uh, to. And see what's up. something we always we keep talking about. We just haven't found – if you all have some guys in the offshore world that you would love to hear us talk to – um, please let us know because that's something we're struggling in. Us being both inshore fishermen, yeah, knowing people in the offshore realm, but not 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 find anybody that's super interested in doing a show yet. So um, yeah, let us know. And, and I wanted to just share one more piece of encouragement. It can be so intimidating, like throwing a top water for redfish, and especially redfish. Maybe not not trout as much in the fall, but um, to get that first bite. But just keep fishing it. You know, fish it in different areas and fish it at different tides. I like a little bit higher water. Don't give up on it. Um, yeah. Just keep fishing it. And, 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 and what depth of water are you really looking for? I don't know if we went over that. Quite oh, yeah. Redfish, quite. redfish, two to five feet of water. Definitely caught them in deeper. Definitely yeah. caught them in less than two feet of water. Trout, maybe that three to eight feet of water. Gotcha. Could catch them in less. Maybe not here, but you catch them in more as well. So Okay. 
Cool, man. Yeah. Well, hopefully you guys uh, stick with it. watch it or listen, stick to it. Just know that you're better at fishing than I am. So, <laughs> and if you if if you really need uh, more education, go start a podcast and yeah. bring people on and talk about it. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's what I did. Like I stink at fishing. Like, okay, hey Judd, what's up, man? You got some extra time? Like, let's start a podcast. And then now he tells me all his secrets. And I'd perfect. rather be lucky than good, anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, that's right, man. Totally rather be lucky than good. Awesome. Well, if you guys don't have anything else, any other questions for us, we're going to call it a night. We're going to call it an episode. Uh, Griffin, thanks so much for watching, contributing. He says, great show. Learn Topwater 101 and going out tomorrow for the Reds and Trout. Definitely throwing lots of Topwater. Griffin, send us your report afterward, man. Look forward to the pictures of what the stuff you're going to be catching out there, the Topwater Reds uh, and Trout. Man, it makes me want to go so bad. I'm like trying to figure out how I do that. So anyways, I think we got a kayak on the way for us to share. I think we do. I think, I think Judson's working on a kayak deal. So maybe we'll go out there and do some kayak. Fishing. We might see Billy, um, paddling his kayak around. Please don't run him over. Cause I will never be able to set this up in my, in my house. <laughs> and Billy's not here. And I really love Billy. So yeah, please yeah. don't hit him when he's kayaking. Yeah, I see. I see what, I see where that went. Like, uh, I can't set this up. And then I, I see how it is. Hey, I was just trying I to, make, I was trying to make That's people right. laugh, man. Well, hey At guys, the expense of others. We appreciate you tuning in. We're going to be back next week. Once again, with Luke, Tippett and Jason Nason and or, Jason Nason. Not Jason Nason. Uh, Jordan. 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 My Nason. goodness. Oh. I can't. I don't know why I said, J- you know, here's what was happening. We were joking before the show. There are several podcasts out there, which hopefully you listen to some of them. I'm not going to mention any names, but they have some really funny introductory things that they say with, you know, different types of names. And just, A little catchy jingle. Just like, the podcast like world in general has some funny jingles. And so we we're like trying to come up with some funny jingles for ourselves and uh, we, so that's all those rhyming names is why I'm stuck on that. So Luke Tippett, Jordan Nason, going to be talking about tournament <laughs> fishing next week. Same time, same place. We'll see you guys uh, next Tuesday, 8 p.m. Later, guys. Catch them up. See you.